Hello, long time, no see. Um, for those of you who actually follow this channel and pay attention, I did miss a video this month. I did. I missed the year of, is it year of terror? I already forgot the thing that I'm doing. I named it. Anyway, <laughs> I missed a video this month, so next month whenever we do our year of terror or year of horror or whatever it is that I fucking called it because I'm intelligent, <laughs> then I'll just do a double dose um, for those categories because honestly, I just, this month has not been my best. <laughs> But without any further excuses, exclamations, whatever, let's dive into today's video because I have so much shit to go through with you guys that I'm really just trying not to keep you here for an hour. So let's get down to business. So for this month, I actually have three unboxings to do with you guys and I also have a mini book haul. So we're just gonna dive into them one after the other. The first unboxing we're gonna do is Owl Crate. Um, for those of you who don't know, Owl Crate is actually a YA subscription box. So it's not like my norm. It's not horror, sci fi, or even adult fantasy romance, aka smut. I'm also going to give you guys a little bit of a closer look at the books that came in the Owl Crate for last month since it did show up late. So let's go ahead and unbox this one. This is the Owl Crate for March. Um, and without further ado, let's just dive into this. I love boxes that are easy to open. They just kind of pop open. Okay. So this is what I'm seeing right off the bat as I pour shit out like I do. So let's see, it looks like we have our little spoiler warning card, which is cute. We always get a little enamel pin in this little package, which I find adorable. It looks like we got a Dorian Gray Age Defying Face Mask Powder. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool because I thought this was tea. <laughs> Looking at this, I really thought this was tea. That's awesome. Dude, I love, oh, it's vegan. You know, I, you know, I go fancy. I go for the vegan products. So that's really cool. Already in love. Um, let's see. I don't know what this is. Oh, Night Court Embroidery Kit. Interesting. Interesting. I'm going to pop this open real quick and see what it looks like. Okay. I've never embroidered anything a day in my life. So, okay, it has the design kind of printed out on it. Ooh, pretty. It was very pretty. Got some, we have our little hoop, our little design cloth, our needles, and our thread. So honestly, that might be a fun little um, hobby or something to pick up. Um, so, I don't know, that's kind of exciting. I have no idea what Night Court is. I mean, I've seen the books that it is referencing so I kind of know what it is but I don't know the story so I'm a little out of the loop on that. Ooh, okay so we have this book cozy on the front it says hope makes its own magic and then on the back we have this art print of this really awesome chick who looks to be painting in a library and she has blue hair. So I'm already kind of having a girl crush on her. So there's that. <laughs> okay, what on earth? You are like a living rose among wax flowers. Oh my gosh, it's a, it's a photo album. Look at this, guys. I love that. I absolutely love that. On the back it says, but isn't absurdity part of being human? We aren't ageless creatures who watch centuries pass from afar. Our worlds are small, our lives are short, and we can only bleed a little before we fall. That sounds ridiculously familiar, and I'm sure the spoil card will tell me what that, what that is from, but I'm drawing a blank right now. Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna save that for last. So at the bottom, Ooh, we have 
some cute little stickers. Those are adorable. So we got some stickers. We have a little booklet. So I have a little bit of a booklet with more information about the author, some other little news, stuff like that. Um, we have a sneak peek for the theme of April, which apparently is peek behind the curtain. So that's pretty cool. Interesting. Um, before I show you the book, let me show you what our pin looks like. Oh, it's adorable. Great Library of Summer Shall. Now, I don't know what that's referencing, but I'll look here in a second. Inspired by Sorcery of Thorns. So, again, no idea what that is, but this looks amazing. This book, I don't even know what this book is about, but it looks fantastic. I'm dying for these spray edges. I'm dying. So it came wrapped and then what, lately what I've noticed is there always seems to be an author or a letter from the author. So that's, that's awesome. Um, I'll read that myself. I'm not going to bother you guys with it, but it's a forgery of roses. A portrait is worth a thousand lives by Jessica S. Olson. Interesting. And look at these freaking edges, guys. And I have to look under the, under the sleeve. Yup, yup. Under the sleeve is where the magic happens. <gasps> oh my God. And then we have our back and we have this really pretty reversible book sleeve. So that's awesome. Okay, so what is this about? I don't actually know. It says, Myra Whitlock has a gift one many would kill for. She is an artist whose portraits alter people's real life bodies, a talent she must hide from those who would kidnap black male and worse in order to control it. Guarding that secret is the only way to keep her younger sister safe now that their parents are gone. But one frigid night, the governor's wife discovers the truth and threatens to expose Myra if she does not complete a special portrait that would resurrect the governor's dead son. Desperate, Myra ventures to his legendary stone mansion. Once she arrives, however, it becomes clear the boy's death was no accident. Someone dangerous lurks within these glittering halls. Someone harboring a disturbing obsession with portrait magic. Myra cannot do the portrait until she until she knows what really happened, so she turns to the governor's older son, a captivating red-headed poet. Together, they delve into the family's most shadowed affairs, racing to uncover the truth before the secret Myra spent her life concealing makes her the killer's next victim. Dude, this sounds pretty cool. This sounds pretty cool, I ain't gonna lie. I will definitely read this. This sounds right up my alley. So honestly, guys, like I've been really digging these Alcrate boxes and I know that they are YA. So I know that they're not like smut. They're not what I'm used to per se, but sometimes it's really nice to sprinkle these in to your TBR and just have a really nice, easy read. So I'm really excited for this box. And honestly, this box is one of the cheaper subscription boxes that I get. Um, I am gonna probably put it on pause starting um next month for a little bit because i am currently trying to save up to purchase my own home so with that being said a lot of play money is being put towards that right now and that's pretty much it guys that's pretty much it i love it i absolutely love that so let's hop right on into the next which is going to be our night worms of course can I just say that Nightworms has some of the most badass packaging? Can I just say that? I love it. <gasps> I knew it. I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. And I actually did not look at the little cheat sheet for this month and I knew it still. So I'm really happy and I just wiped my lipstick off. So if I spend the rest of this video with like smooshed blue lips, forgive me. So let's go through our little bag of goodies first. 
<laughs> now I am actually canceling my subscription to Nightworms for right now um, because again I'm trying to actually save all my play money. So a lot of my subscriptions are going to have to be paused or canceled and so far Nightworms doesn't really have a way for me to um, <coughs> delay or pause the subscription. Um, so I did have to ultimately cancel it, which I hate because sometimes it is so hard to get back on the bandwagon with them. But anyway, first up we have at the Stroke of Midnight Tea. It's uh, flavored tiramisu and vanilla. That's delicious. I'm probably gonna have to try that later tonight. Then we have a Re Read More Women Magnet. I love that. We also have a Night Fire sticker. We have our nameplates. We have our Night Fire um, Nightworms bookmark, as we can see. Then we also have the Fervor bookmark. It's kind of like a little um, advertisement for. Uh, Alma Katsu, her new book that's coming out soon. And for our books, guys, we have Certain Dark Things, Isn't It Beautiful, and Sundial, which is Kashigan Award's newest book. Um, I am very excited about both of these. Honestly, I've been like on the fence about purchasing this book for a very long time because it's it sounds like it's my thing, but at the same time, not really. So I was kind of like, mm, do I want to risk it? Well, apparently the cosmos is telling me to risk it. So we'll be reading this. Sundial has been on my to buy list for a while, but because I have these subscription boxes, I always kind of want to hold off and be like, well, are they going to get that? Are they going to choose that? So that is awesome. Let me go through what these books are about real quick and then we will hop on to Abominable. So let's say, you can't escape what's in your blood. All Rob wanted was a normal life. She almost got it too. A husband, two kids, a nice house in the suburbs. But Rob, I, I'm just freaking me out that Rob is a girl. But I like it. I really like it. I like being able to have interchangeable names and not really like just know what gender we're talking about. But Rob fears for her oldest daughter, Callie, who collects tiny bones and whispers to imaginary friends. Rob sees a darkness in Callie, one that reminds her too much of the family she left behind. She decides to take Callie back to her childhood home, to Sundial, deep in the Mojave Desert. And there she will have to make a terrible choice. Callie is worried about her mother. Rob has begun to look at her strange, strangely and speaks of past secrets. Callie fears that only one of them will leave Sundial alive. The mother and daughter embark on a dark desert journey to the past in the hopes of redeeming their future. Sharp as a snake bite, Sundial is a thrilling new novel from the internationally best-selling author of The Last House on Needless Street. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. It's freaking beautiful. And it honestly does not look that long. And then with A Certain Dark Things by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia. Again, so sorry if I'm butchering your name. This one says, Welcome to Mexico City, an oasis in a sea of vampires. Domingo, a lonely garbage collecting street kid, is just trying to survive its heavily policed streets when a jaded vampire on the run swoops into his life. Otl? The descendant of Aztec blood drinkers is smart, beautiful, and dangerous. Domingo is mesmerized. Atul needs to quickly escape the city, far from the rival narco vampire clan relentlessly pursuing her. Her plan doesn't include Domingo, but Atul finds herself warming up to the scrappy young man and his undeniable charm. As the trial, uh, oh, as the trail of corpses stretches behind them, local cops and crime bosses start closing in. Vampires, humans, cops, and criminals collide in the dark streets of Mexico City. Do Atul and Domingo stand a chance of making it out alive, or will the city devour them all? I like it. I definitely like it. So I'm very excited with this. Um, and I do have the two nameplates that go in the book. So those are technically signed. Okay, guys. It's time. Oh. 
Oh my God. All right, so I'm not gonna show you right off the front because then you'll see the books and it will ruin it. So we, all, we okay, I won't say always because we actually don't always, but we usually get a pin just like we do with Owl Crate, except of course Abominable Book Club is horror specific. So here we are. But this pin is adorable. It's literally the book cover from Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, which is amazing. Fucking love it. It's beautiful. Um, let's see, move the actual books. Interesting. <gasps> dive into that in a minute. So as always, we get our little bag of goodies. Um, and these are usually hot drinks. Hey, that one actually worked off right. So we have Nescafe Cappuccino, Galaxy Instant Hot Chocolate. Um, we have a couple of off black teas, which I love. Futures Pink, Earl Grey, and Rose. Ooh and strawberry and pink pepper. Not sure how that's gonna be, but this is my favorite that comes in them. The Lion's Percadilly Coffee Bag. These are instant coffee bags. It's basically tea. It's basically a tea bag, but with coffee, and you just drop it in. And half the time, it honestly tastes good enough that I don't miss creamer. I mean, sometimes I'll st still put creamer in. Creamer? Creamer? Creamer in, but uh, more often than not, I won't. We have, of course, our used book, which we will wait to open until the end of this unboxing. We have, cute, cute, cute. God, I feel like I'm digging for a lot of stuff this time. Oh, I love it. They had this for us last time, I think. I think, I might be wrong. I always like to dig through the little confetti just to make sure. We have Love Corn Salt and Vinegar. I think we had a different flavor of this at one point and it's actually really good. So I'm probably gonna snack on this later. Then we have our bookmarks. So we have our normal Abominable Book Club with the microfiction on the back. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and read this to you just for the sake of time. Um, but if any of y'all follow Harpies in the Trees, uh, which if you're not, what are you doing with your life? She usually will read out all of the um, micro fictions. So this one says, it is true we shall be monsters cut off from all the world, but on that account, we shall be more attached to one another. So that's a quote from Frankenstein, which if you know me, you know that Frankenstein is my all time favorite classic horror novel. So yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's all the little stuff from Abominable. So let's get into these books. I am so interested in this. It's called Hexperiments, a dark biotech anthology. Could we be any more intriguing? The cover is gorgeous. Honestly, it's not very long. I have to started to really get into anthologies lately. I used to hate short story collections, but lately they've been really gearing me up, especially horror ones. Now the back says, the science behind this charity anthology is engineered to bring exposure to its contributors and provide funding to help support the homeless. The proceeds from each sale go directly to that cause. So that's pretty awesome. So I bet if you look this up online, they probably have um, something written underneath or whatnot that tells you that this is a charity purchase. So if you can find it online, go ahead and purchase it yourself because you'll be given to a good cause. That is amazing. The next new-ish release is called The Apparition Phase by Will McLean. We got a little penguin book here. Hell yeah. Not too big of a chunker, but let's see what it's about. It says, 
Twins Tim and Abby have always been different from their peers, spending their evenings in the attic of their parents' suburban house, poring over reports of the unexplained. Obsessed with photographs of ghostly apparitions, they decide to fake their own and use it to frighten a girl at school. But what was only supposed to be a harmless prank sets in motion a deadly and terrifying chain of events that neither of them could have predicted. Ooh, okay, that sounds interesting. That sounds like, you know, someone's horrible idea went very, very wrong. <laughs> okay, we're at that time. We are at that time. Where's my little cutting instrument? All right, guys, we're gonna see what used book we got from Abominable. What? I've never heard this before. It says Autumn, The City by David Moody. Interesting. The Nightmare Continues in the first sequel to Autumn. So I'm assuming there's a book called Autumn by itself that I probably need to read before this one. It says a disease of unimaginable ferocity tears across the face of the planet, leaving billions of people dead. A small group of survivors cower in fear in the desolate remains of a silent city. As the full effects of the disease are revealed, they fight to keep thousands of plague victims at bay. They fight to stay alive. The appearance of a company of soldiers again threatens the survivors' fragile existence. Do they trust this sudden military presence? Do the soldiers bring hope and answers or more fear and suffering? So this kind of sounds a little bit like Walking Dead after you get over the walkers because then you start to realize that the people you really should be afraid of are the people who are still alive. So this sounds interesting, but I hesitate to read it until I read Autumn. So we'll see, we'll see about this one. I may end up regifting it or something like that. But yes, guys, that is it. That is all of the unboxings. So we had Owl Crate, we had Nightworms, and we had the Abominable Book Club. So let's dive into the book haul. <laughs> okay. Let me get through the swarm of madness of things surrounding me. All right, so firstly, I want to give you guys a closer look at the books that came in the last owl crate that arrived late. This first one being, of course, my all-time favorite classic horror novel, Frankenstein. Like, come on with this cover. Come on. Just, it's beautiful and I love it, and it's probably gonna go in a glass case at some point because it's that gorgeous. Anyway, moving along. Then we had the, uh, no, sorry, not, no the. Then we had Only a Monster by Vanessa Lynn. And I've heard about this book a little bit, a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. Look at this beautiful cover underneath. Oh my God, I love it so much. But yeah, I love that this one has black sprayed edges and the new one, hold on, if I can pick it up. The new one has red sprayed edges. They're just so beautiful. They're just so beautiful. And honestly, they've been killing it with the uh, book selections. So I am happy about that. Um, so that those were the only YA books because I don't usually purchase YA on my own. I'll usually like, do a subscription box or something like that. But moving into fantasy romance, AKA smut, that we all know that I love. I ended up getting the sequel to, um, what was it called? Her Soul to Take? Her Soul to Take, I think it was. Um, so this is the Souls Trilogy book two, Her Soul for Revenge by Harry, Harry Harley LaRue. And if you're familiar with the first one, this one is basically Juniper and Zane's story. Each one of these books is a different couple's story and version of events that happen. Um, and I'm hoping it is just as good as the first one because the first one was phenomenal in both smut categories and actually the plot, storyline, and characters were all very awesome. So I'm hoping this one is just as good. Next, we have Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young. This cover reeled me in and then I read what it was about and I had to, 
I had to. I don't actually know if this is YA. It didn't say it was YA, but it says part Wonder Woman, part Vikings. I had to. It almost sounds like an enemy to lovers situation, but it sounds like this is mainly going to be character and plot based and not so much on the smut. So I'm excited. I'm excited to get to this one eventually someday. <laughs> All right, let's talk about manga. Or if you're from East Texas, manga. I said it. I stand by it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I did do kind of like a, I bought three new manga books. Um, I've been collecting B stars. I've already watched season one and season two of B stars. I am firmly and forever a diehard V Stars fan. I'm already plotting my Legoshi and Haru tattoos, so fuck off. But I'm only up to purchasing the fifth one. So I did finally purchase V Stars Volume 5. Um, I also purchased, and again, I'm probably saying this wrong, Gyo by Junji Ito because I love all things Junji Ito and it just had to be and the last manga i bought for this uh, month was devil's line number one um i was not looking to add any new manga collections or start any new manga series but it popped up on my little like amazon feed or whatever and it just looked so intriguing i had to give it a try so those are my three manga books that I bought. You can see my book buying ban is going swimmingly. And I won't really say it's a book buying ban. I tried to limit myself to only buying three books a month and um, you can see how well that's going. So moving on to horror, because we all know horror is the best. I picked up The Troop by Nick Cutter. Now, I've been hearing about Nick Cutter for a very long time, um, since I found the wonderful world of booktube, book talk, and bookstagram. So books like this, I don't usually get because as y'all know, body horror is difficult for me, <laughs> but that it also involves a lot of body horror. So I'm going to be testing myself with this one. I already know. I already know. The next one is Goddess of Filth by V. Castro. Um, honestly, I didn't realize it was this small. I didn't realize it was more of like a novella, which I'm excited about because that means I could probably just like squeeze this in one month randomly when I'm in the mood for it. Possession story. I'm not gonna go through all these and tell y'all what, what they're about. Just know that they've been on my TBR, for, not my TBR, my to be bought, TBB, TBB for a very long time. <laughs> but I'm very interested in this book in particular. The next one we have is The Remaking by Clay McLeod Chapman. Um, this originally was not on my TBD because a couple of booktubers that I follow were kind of like eh about it. But honestly, I, I saw it in one of my local bookstores and I started reading the back and I was just like, something about this book is drawing me in. So I grabbed it. Get off me. The next one up is Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. I already know I'm fucking that up. But this big beauty right here Again, I feel like this one has potential to be a creature feature or maybe part possession story as well. Tiny little print. So this is going to be a pretty big undertaking at some point. And last but not least, we have Seed by Anya Auburn. I love Anya so much, but to be honest, I've only ever read one of her books. I was thinking that the other day. I was like, this author has impressed me so fucking much but then i thought back to it and i was like i've only read one i read the shuddering last year so i've been hearing ravings and ravings and ravings about this one and the other one i think is called big brother or maybe it's just called brother um so i picked this one up first just because it sounds a little more interesting so that's it guys i know i know i know i know i have spending problems i need help 
Um, this is part of my therapy though, so. <laughs> But yes, I am trying to cut back on the spending very much. Um, and I am going to have to cut back on some of my subscription boxes for at least a little while um, while I save up to purchase my first ever home. So yeah, I'm very excited. I hope you guys are very excited because then y'all get to finally see content that's not sitting on my bed. And um, we can start having some new kinds of content coming through and I can definitely start uploading more often. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if any of these um, subscription boxes or books intrigue you. I will try to have everything linked down below. If I forget something, remind me in the comments and I'll, I'll tag it. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys are having a wonderful month. I can't believe we're already basically to April. Holy shit. Morbius comes out April 1st. Oh, I'm excited. Anyway, my next uh, video will be coming out pretty soon about my reading recap and my TBR for April. So be looking for that. And again, I love you guys. Thank you so much for the support and the views and the likes. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next one.